All right, how is your layer mask coming along? I hope you're having fun here. I hope you're doing a half-decent job. Now do you see what I mean about it being very similar to the quick mask mode? So again, as you're refining your, your quick mask, as you're refining things here, again, it's a lot of back and forth between the white and the black, hitting the X key on your keyboard, and using your square brackets on your keyboard to increase and decrease your brush size. Just trying to do a, a decent job here. A lot of zooming in and out. And it really works in a similar way. Again, if you cut in too far, then you can always paint things back, right? Again, we're non-destructive here, which is fantastic. Now, you know, as I was working along, I realized that I should probably show you a couple of neat tricks, a couple of neat techniques that you can make use of to make sure you're getting a decent selection, a decent mask happening here. So check this out. So here's technique number one. What I'm going to do, of course, I'm still on my paintbrush, is I want to make sure that I don't have any transparent areas on the inside of my truck. I want to make sure that I covered all of the bumper and all the trim and the interior and all the rest of it, right? So what I can do is I can hold down the command key or the control key over on the window side and click on the mask thumbnail inside the layers palette, and that will load your mask as a selection, as marching ants. And then if I zoom in just a little bit here, you know, I'm going to hit shift tab on my keyboard a couple of times just to get rid of my palettes. I want to make sure that I don't have any marching ants on the inside here and it's looking really good. Doesn't look like there's any marching ants in there which is awesome. So again just a neat little trick that you can use there. I'm just going to hit F7 again to bring my layers palette back and I'll deselect here. Command D or Control D. And, you know, the other thing that I wanted to mention as well is I can hold down the Option key or the Alt key again there on the Windows side and I can click on the Mask thumbnail and now what I get is almost like we saw, well, actually, you know what, exactly what we saw earlier when we were messing around with our Alpha channel. So now I get a mask that is solid black and solid white and again, shades of gray are partial selections, right? And I realized, well, maybe my selection wasn't as good as I thought it was because I can see a lot of black in the, for example, in the hubcaps there, the rims of the toy truck. I can see some white or some, some grayish areas on the outside of my truck. And all the way down myself here anyway, in the bottom right corner, there's a, a huge area there that's not done properly. And if I move around inside my image, it looks like, well, actually I missed a strip there over on the far left side as well. So again, just with my my paintbrush tool here and black is my my foreground color I'm just gonna go around and make sure that I've got a perfect selection here so you know I'll do most of this you know off camera but this is just kind of giving you the idea here flip over to white and make sure that I have everything nice and clean and perfect here Again, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but you want to do a half decent job anyway don't forget zooming in is always a good idea so I would basically make my way around the image and kind of clean it up as best I can, right? Now, that's another thing that I can do here. Now, to get back to sort of regular old Photoshop, what I'll do is I'll hold down Option or Alt again and click on my layer mask thumbnail once more, and that brings me back to where you and I were. So isn't that something? It looks really good here, but again, holding down Alt or Option and clicking on that thumbnail, and I realize, well, I didn't do as good a job as I thought I had, right? So anyway, a neat little trick there. Now, I want to show you one more thing here. I'm going to flip over to my move tool just by hitting the V key on my keyboard. And if I try and move my truck, no problem. It moves on the on that transparent background, no problem, right? And that's because the image, this thumbnail, if you will, the layer thumbnail, is moving with the mask thumbnail. The two are connected, remember, don't forget, there's that link there. But check this out, and this delves into the world, perhaps, of special effects. What I could do here is I could unlink the two. So now I still have my layer mask selected. And by the way, I can tell he's selected because I see these little sort of these angle lines in the corners there to indicate that he's selected. And now if I drag, I'm actually moving the mask, not the truck. Kind of weird. Let me undo that. Command Z or Control Z there on the window side. And I'll do the opposite. I'll grab the image thumbnail, so I click over on this guy, and now I drag and I move the trucks 
but the mask stays where it is. Really wacky stuff. You might have a use for this, I have no idea. Once again, I'm gonna undo that though, and I will relink the two together just by clicking between their thumbnails, and now when I drag one, I drag both. So there you go, there's layer masks anyway. I wanna show you now what to do with your layer mask now that you've actually gone to the effort of cleaning them up and making them perfect, and you know, once again, maybe you alter option click on this thumbnail and you make them even better, clean them all up. Then what do you do with them? Well, let me show you what you can actually do with your layer masks once you get them perfect.